Hello. How y'all doing? Man, it's so good to be here and uh, to be together um, in the way that we are this morning. You know, as Jill was saying, just everybody together between Bread Pub and Lee Scott and, and all you Hamilton Road folks are here every week, man. We're just really excited to be here. Um, a couple of us from Lee Scott were kind of joking as we walked in here. We normally meet in a gym and we can't take like drinks and food in there with us all the time. So it's like we kind of felt like we're really going to get in trouble, like bringing our hot chocolate in here this morning and everything. It's just remembering that. But it, it really is great to be together. Um, you know, I was out there and I was saying um, uh, to different people when, I, when I'd see folks, I would say, um, you know, I don't know what to say to you because I'm like, I want to say Merry Christmas. But some of you, I said Merry Christmas to, and you're like, yeah, 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 it's good. And then, and then some of you almost say Happy New Year, and you're like, yeah, yeah, it's good. It's like, but we're in this awkward, like, in-between time right now, you know, of like, it's like, yeah, Christmas happened, but New Year's isn't quite here yet, so, you know, we're in, so I'm just going to say, like, Merry New Year, you know, this morning, Merry New Year, just for a couple more days, and we'll, we'll get through, so. Um, also, if... Let's see, I know there's people that are still kind of coming in. If you guys can make room, if you see somebody coming in looking for a seat, just kind of say right down here. There's like five right down here if anybody needs a seat. So, um, But like Jill said too, and I'm really pumped that we have our families here with us. I know we have our littlest ones or some are still down the hall, but I see a lot of little friends in here. Are you guys, you guys hanging in there? Let me just hold your hands up if you're somebody who's normally in like pebble path or rock city i gotta get my eyes on you and kind of see where you are because you're gonna help me today all right some of you guys out there okay good good you've been really quiet so far all right i need your help today though um some of you i'm gonna call on you a little bit to, to kind of help me with my sermon a little bit along the way okay so don't be afraid to like jump out there and go for it when i'm asking for your help in just a minute here so um we were just singing and you know like john was was saying about these things in our lives that, that we have and that we hold dear, but that, that who God is and what he has done for us is greater beyond all that. And that's really what Christmas is, man. We are so blessed. He has been so good to us to give us this gift of his son um, that broke into this world for us. And that's what we celebrate, this unbelievable gift, you know, that he gave us. Now, with that, we kind of have this tradition where we give and we receive gifts to one another, don't we? You know? So this is the part where I want to ask some of my, my young friends to help me out. I want to hear, your parents are going to think I'm crazy. I want to hear some of your most favorite things that you got for Christmas this year. So come on, let's, let's hear it. Just go, just shout it out. Go for it. What you got right there? A Lego set. Clem. Oh my goodness, an iPod charge, some basketball shoes. What else we got? Over here, Spencer. Legos. We got Legos. Did anybody get a rainbow loom kit? No? A whoopee cushion? All right. That's good. That's good. Okay, let's move on. What else? What else? <laughs> no. What, what are some other things? Give me just a couple of more. Let's go for it. Over here, I see a little hand. What you got, sir? Roxwell pineapple Legos? I don't know. I heard Legos. Lots of Legos going around here, you know? You know, any, anything else? Anything else? Any of you adults want to shout out anything? What's your, a new bike. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir, back there. PlayStation. Dude, awesome. You know what I got? I got some house slippers. <laughs> and, and this shows you how I feel like I'm getting older because I was so pumped about these, <laughs> these house slippers. They're awesome. They're from L.L. Bean, and they got, like, like this shearling, like, lining, and it wicks away moisture and everything. I mean, they're awesome. I need them. They're perfect just for going to the mailbox and taking the dog out, so I was pumped about that. So, anyways, you guys got some unbelievable great gifts, didn't you? And, um, you know, this past week, I was talking with my kids, and uh, we started, they, they kept asking me all month long what I wanted for Christmas, what I was asking for, and I kept saying, I want some bedroom slippers, you know, and they're like, what? And so we started talking a little bit about some of the gifts that I received when I was a little kid. And I started sharing this with them. And it was so funny to think about it. And so I was trying to think of my most memorable Christmases, some of those things that, that I received. And so um, I can't remember too much when I was really young. Sometimes I see pictures. I got a bike. 
you know, some things like that. Um, but a couple that I remember, I kind of had these themed Christmases, you know, where I was into a certain thing one year. One year I was into being like an outdoorsman, army man kind of guy. So I got like lots of G.I. Joe um, little figures and everything. I got a Red Ryder BB gun. I know, I know there's somebody in here. Please tell me somebody in here got a Red Ryder BB gun this year. I know, I know. I'm, I almost did. I shot my tooth out almost one time. Okay, so anyways, I got some camo. I got, my uncle got me this really awesome, like, army, an official army, like, big duffel bag kind of thing. All this kind of really cool stuff. Um, another year, I was really into skateboarding. This guy, Tony Hawk, he's still around. And he was around when I was a little kid. He was just coming on the scene, man. I got this awesome skateboard. It was called the Executioner. This is when skateboards were really wide, and people rode them on these half-pipe things and everything, man. I was so into that. I got knee pads and all this kind of cool stuff. But I think my most memorable one was, was this one year where I was really into breakdancing, okay? <laughs> and so I wanted a jam box. But not just a jam box. This is what they used to call a ghetto blaster. This is like you would put it up on your shoulder and you could walk around with it, you know. And it kind of had two speakers that had this booming thing going on. And so I got a jam box one Christmas. And so the, the, and I, I think I even got like some parachute pants that year and some vans and all this kind of stuff. And so I... Um, a couple of days later, me and my buddies around the neighborhood, we, we went and collected all the cardboard boxes that were left over from Christmas, and we got out in the driveway, and we duct taped these cardboard boxes together and make this big, this big, like, square thing, and we're, like, going in and going in and, you know, break dancing and all this stuff, and the jam box is over there, and we're listening to our new Sir Mix-A-Lot tapes and all this kind of stuff, and man, it was awesome, I mean, just the amazing gifts that we received, you know, when we were kids, and some of you think about some of those things that you got when you are kids, it's awesome, wasn't it? So, I'm talking to my kids about this. And um, in the middle of this, I realized, I told Leslie this, I was like, you know what? I do not have one of those things in my life right now. <laughs> Every single one of them are gone. <laughs> They're gone. Everything that was cool and awesome. I didn't even tell you, I got a Walkman one year too, you know. That thing is gone. It's, it's totally gone. I have nothing. The only thing that I was trying to think of that I have now that I received at Christmas when I was about 12 years old, I received a, a pocket knife from my uncle that I still have. And then I think the next year I got a shotgun, so I definitely still have that one. I was about 13. But, but all of that stuff, my Legos, my Lincoln Logs, my Sir Mix-a-Lot tapes, my, my Boom Blaster thing, vans, parachute pants, all the cool stuff, G.I. Joe's, all of it is gone. It's gone. And so, not to be a big downer on all you little friends here, but these amazing things that you got, they're not going to last. You know, here's what's going to happen. A lot of my stuff, when I moved or, or, you know, as I got older, I wasn't interested anymore, and I wanted to clear out my room, I just kind of throw it away at the end of the year, stuff like that. I just didn't or it'd break, or it just wasn't cool anymore. You know, I grew out of my parachute pants and just give them on down the line. You know, but I, you just don't have it anymore, you know? And so it made me start thinking, what, what is something that we receive? What is a gift that we can have in our life? What are the things that we, that we take into our lives that we can really have and that we can keep? What are the things that last, you know? All my little friends here, what what are those things that can really last in our lives and even go beyond this life into the next? That's it, man. Kenny, you're helping me out, buddy. I appreciate that. I I, I want to um I want to share with you a little bit of um kind of the rest of the story, a little bit that happens with Jesus, something that we don't hear about a whole lot. Man, around Christmas, this month leading up to Christmas, we're studying so much about this Luke 2 passage about um, the wise men, the shepherds, and um, Jesus, you know, being born, and Mary and Joseph, and all this kind of stuff. And then so many times, like, what happens is like, man, Christmas happens, boom, we draw the line down, and start the new year, Jesus is walking on water, you know, he's doing all this kind of stuff, you know, but there's so much that happens um, that's kind of in the end of that chapter there. And I just want us to hear a few words there about something um, that happens in Jesus' life here. And it's just these two 
these two little verses here, and it says this. It says, When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, and he was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. So, that's what happened. Jesus didn't just some kind of miraculously go from the manger to healing people and doing all this kind of stuff. I mean, he actually lived a life like he was a little infant, and then he became you know, a little toddler, like learning how to walk and everything. And, and um, you know, and then he became like a young man and a boy. And, I mean, he, he had to grow up. And so I, I want us to just look at, at a few things here that Jesus had in his life that last. There's three things here, and I want you to help me with them. All my little friends, the first one that we see here is that Jesus grew and he became strong. And so Jesus, that he gained strength. He had strength. I want all my little friends in here to say that word with me on three. I'm just going to say strength. You ready? And i got to hear it now because we got some older people in here that don't hear very well sometimes. Sometimes they fall asleep when I'm preaching, so I need you to help me. Okay? So strength. One, two, three. Strength. Strength. That's one thing that Jesus had in his life was strength. Now, all you kids probably know of some strong people in your life. You know, it might be your parents or an uncle or a friend or something that's like, I'm, I'm talking like buff, strong, physically strong, big muscles, you know what I mean? And Jesus grew like his, his body was growing as he was fully a, a human, you know, just like a little boy, like some of you little boys here. I mean, he was growing up in that way. But the strength that the Bible is talking about here is a different kind of strength. It's a strength that he had in his spirit or really in his life. And just in the same way that like a really strong person, when something really hard to lift up, you know, comes along in their life, or a big pressure or something like that, they can bust right through because they're so strong. In the same way that Jesus grew in a way where his life was strong, when he went through hard things, you know, when there were pressures or struggles or challenges in his life, like he grew and he was strong in that. And the way for you and I that we grow strong in that is when we go through challenges and struggles and hard things that we trust in the Lord. And it's in those places where we really don't know exactly what's going on. Things may not be going our way the way that we would like them to go. But we say, you know what? I'm going to trust you, God. That you are my God. You are my creator. You're my father in heaven, the one that made me. And so I'm going to trust you. And as you do, it's like, man, you're, get, you're bulking up. You know what I mean? You, you're becoming stronger and stronger in your life. And as you grow older and things happen in this world, you know, that maybe come sometimes from your choices and may come from other um, outward things, that when those things come against you, like you are strong and you can stand in those things. So strength. You got it? That's number one. That's the first thing. The second thing that it says here about Jesus is that he was filled with wisdom. All right? Can you guys give me a wisdom? You ready? One, two, three. That's good. Good job over there. I want to hear some more. We're kind of lacking over here, so come on. All right, wisdom. Strength and then wisdom. That's a little late, but that's good. That's good. Strength and wisdom. Wisdom is this thing that it, it, it's not quite like knowledge. Because, see, some of you all know people who kind of just know a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? Some of you might have friends. You're like, man, that kid's really smart. Like, he knows, you know, he can write a cursive and do multiplication and all this kind of stuff, you know. Or, or people who are really smart adults, you know, that they just know a lot of things. But wisdom is something very different. It is something very special. Wisdom is something where um, you can look at a situation that's happening in your life and you can see what God thinks about that situation. And you can kind of know in your mind and in your heart what God would see into that situation. Not just yourself. It's the thoughts of God that he gives to us that we can look into something and say, okay, I think this is what God is seeing about this what he would feel about this. 
and probably how he would want me to act and behave in this situation. That's what wisdom is. Wisdom. And wisdom will never let you down and you will never lose it. It will never spoil or fade or, or you know, you won't lose it. You won't get tired of it. You won't want to throw it out at the end of the year or anything like that. Wisdom. Strength and wisdom. And then the third thing that he had is he was, um, and the grace of God was on him. That Jesus had the grace of God on him. Now, when we hear grace, many times what we think about is something that is given that is undeserved. But it was something different in Jesus' life because he was very deserving. And while he was growing up as a child, he was not, was not childlike. He was not selfish. He was without sin. But grace, it really um, kind of means it the same thing. At the same time, like the power of God, the character of God, all of that was given and was put into Jesus. And because of Jesus' life, the way that he lived, and then the way, ultimately, that he gave his life for all of us on the cross, that by that sacrifice, he opened a doorway so that now you and I could receive that kind of grace. You know, that for you and I, it is something that wasn't, that wasn't, uh, that we were undeserving for, but that we could receive. And so we receive his power in his character inside of our lives. So we have, I didn't do grace, did I? My third thing here. Now y'all gotta help me out, people, my little friends. So, okay, grace on three. You ready? One, two, three, grace. You did good. Clem, I need to hear a grace over there. That's good. He grew in strength and wisdom and grace. And those are things that will last, you know, throughout your entire life. You know, for me, as a parent, that is what I want for my kids, you know. I want them to grow up and to be strong, you know, because I know they're going to face adversity and things in their life, and I want to see them grow up and, and to be able to, to withstand, you know, to be that house that is built on the rock, you know, and I want them to have wisdom to perceive through the things and the messages of this world and to see what God is saying to them. I want them to have grace. I want them to know that they're cherished and loved, and I want them to be like recipients of grace and also dispensers of grace, <laughs> you know, in their life. And that, that's just my prayer for them. And I think about our church, and, uh, you know, I've, I've been a part of this church now for, I mean, almost like uh, 11 years this year. And, you know, something about this church that I'll tell you is, is this, that our kids are important to us. You, you friends who've been helping me out with my, with my sermon this morning, we love you. We do. And, and it's awesome to have you in here as a part of this today. And we look at you in your life, and we say, man, these kids, man, they are the leaders of the church. They are the next generation that will change the world for the kingdom of God. And we see that in you, and we believe that in you, and, and we, we pray that for you. And, and for us as parents, man, sometimes we don't get it right. You know, sometimes we mess up, and, and we need you to forgive us and help us along the way. But, you know, with God's strength and his power in our lives, man, we're going to do, do all we can. And, and even those of us who, who maybe aren't parents yet or have been and, and well, I guess you never stop being a parent if you are, you know, that kind of stuff. But, you know, maybe you're not in the throes of that right now. But as a body, I just think, like, we together are raising up a generation, you know, a next generation for the kingdom of God, the next disciples, the next leaders of the church, you know, that will, will come from sitting right here, around here with us, you know. And, um, you know, for us as parents, there's, there's something where we want to give a blessing to this next generation, don't we? We want to bless them. And, and there's kind of a difference between, there's like this spectrum here between blessing our children and then like on the other end of the spectrum is doing things for them in such a way to where we are spoiling our children. And you know what helps us kind of see where we are on this spectrum here somewhere is the level of, um, of really, really um, entitlement that we see in our kids. You know, higher entitlement, there's been some spoiling over here, you know. Lesser entitlement, more gratitude, there's blessing over here. And so, we, man, we need God's help to navigate. How do you do that, you know, in that, that way along the way? I mean, that's what I'm, I'm praying for. I need it. I need strength, wisdom, and grace as a parent as I do this along the way. So, 
But th- today, I, I just I wanted to end with something a little different here. I wanted to ask if all of my, my little friends, if, if you're normally someone who's like, you know, with us in Rock City or Pebble Path, I want you to stand up. If you'd stand up. And some of you are little people, and, and we're going to do something really cool here. If you want to, you can stand on the chair. Yeah. Stand on the chair. There you go. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. I want you all to look at, at these friends. And to see them, to see that this is our next generation that we're raising up. And even the ones who are in, in the back here with us. So, yeah. So here's what we're going to do. Guys, I want you to stay standing up. And, and we are going to pray for you this morning. Okay? I'm going to lead the prayer um, and kind of just lead the way. And all you old folks out there, you just kind of agree. Say a little amen if you want to. You can nod your head and say, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right, Lord. That's what we want. So we're going to do that, and that's how we're going to close this morning. So you guys just stand there, stand strong, you know, receive the wisdom that this church and your parents want to pour into you and the grace of God that he wants to pour into you, okay? So let's pray together now. God, man, you are, you are so good. And I just thank you, Jesus, that you chose to share life with us and that you grew up as a little boy. And uh, the things that, that our kids in this church go through, the challenges they have, the frustrations, the, um, the hurt that they sometimes have in their life, Lord, that Jesus, you know it because you grew up too. And I thank you for that. And as this church, we pray for these kids the ones that are standing here among us, the ones on our hearts that, that uh, aren't here with us this morning, the ones who are um, uh, just down the hall being loved on right now, Lord, we pray for your blessing in their lives Jesus we pray that they will grow in strength that they will grow in wisdom and that they will grow in your grace, Lord, that you will just make them a bold force for the kingdom of God, that they will grow to be kingdom representatives in their lives, Lord. Would you help them draw them out of their own um, entitlement and and moments where we all uh, think this world is all about us, Lord? Would you give us wisdom to see the world the way that you see it, to love our families well, to love friends well, to love those who are hard to love sometimes? you lead us in these things. We pray this in your name. Amen.